after a very, very long and difficult deliberation, I finally decided to get ETMAX. So I wanted to give a short video, explain why I went with ETMAX over GT Pro, my impressions after the first ride. So let's go. So I got my ET Max from Alien Rides. I think it's my eighth AUC I'm getting from them. With Chinese manufacturers, it's always good to have a local dealer in case you encounter some problems. And indeed, I needed some help even with ET Max. Luckily, Alien Rides has all kinds of specialized equipment to help me deal with that. So my ET Max was good to go. Before deciding to go with ET Max, I did take both GT Pro and ET Max for a short ride around Alien Rides. Obviously, this is not the same as owning the wheel for a long time, but it gives you some sense of how this wheel behaves. Both of the wheels are modern, very powerful wheels, able to both accelerate and brake very well. At the same time, there are differences. One of the main things that becomes obvious when you compare them side by side is stability. Both wheels are fairly heavy and stable wheels, but GT Pro is still more stable. Now, stability is a dual-edged sword. There is a fundamental trade-off between stability and maneuverability. And I think GT Pro is more stable and ET Max is more maneuverable and feels much more nimble when you're riding. There are three main factors that contribute to perception of wheel stability. One is the weight of the wheel, and especially how high is this weight of the ground. So while ET Max is a taller and heavier wheel, the weight of GT Pro is closer to the ground, so it feels heavier. The second factor is the width of the tire itself, and GT Pro has a wider tire. And, and finally, there is the weight of the rotating motor. GT Pro has a heavier C40 motor, versus ET Max has a lighter C380 motor which again allows you to more easily corner hard. Now with a good technique, you can definitely corner very hard on either wheel, but it's a little bit easier to do it with ET Max, at least in my experience. Now, the other thing that was interesting, I tried hard braking on both wheels. Obviously, both have enough power to brake, but with ET Max, it was very easy for me to lower my center of gravity behind the wheel for a good emergency braking position. With GT Pro, it was more difficult, not because the wheel is longer, but there is a spoiler that's exactly in the place where you like to lower yourself. And even if you remove the spoiler, there is a handle under that. So braking requires a little bit more consideration. Again, I'm sure it's absolutely capable of braking, but for me, ET Max seemed a little bit more ergonomic, easier to do emergency braking. Another thing that was interesting to me is to understand power consumption of this new cohort of high voltage wheel. Coming from EX30, which has fairly sizable battery, 3600 watt hours, and I enjoy long 50 mile plus rides, I wanted to see how much more my 168 volt wheel will consume, especially if the battery is slightly smaller. Obviously, power consumption is very unique to each rider. It depends on their weight, riding style, as well as route profile. So let me give you the actual numbers as well as compare it to EX30 as a relative measure. So the ride was 29 mile ride, up and down the mountain. All of it was hills, very small portions that are completely flat. I am a 270 pound rider with a gear, so definitely on the heavier side. I was going about as far as I typically take my EX30, so not super fast. My average was 27 miles an hour, and at the uh, flat stretches, I was able to get to mid 40s. M my ride was 29 miles, and at the end of the ride, my ET Max had 50% of its battery remaining. To compare, typically on the same route in EX30, I would get about 65% left. When I did the math, I found out that I'm losing about 22% of range uh, on ET Max, when the pure battery capacity would indicate that I should be losing around 17. So high voltage wheel does burn a little bit more battery, but actually fairly minor difference, much less than I expected. 